Delayed an entire year following massive post-production issues, this historical epic by famed director Martin Scorsese was released during the height of award season in December of 2002, eventually doubling its $100 million budget. Nominated for an impressive 10 Oscars but failing to win any of them, Leonardo DiCaprio stars as a young Irish immigrant living in New York during the 1860s, who goes undercover plotting against the leader of a gang of Native Americans, led by Daniel Day-Lewis. DiCaprio is seamless in the role, faux accent and all, chewing through the wordy and period-accurate dialect effortlessly. In one of his many nominated roles, Day-Lewis is astonishingly believable as always, speaking with a guttural, intellectual tone, respectful of his enemies but entirely uncompromising and frightening when dealing with them. Remarking on his longevity, he favors the spectacle of fearsome acts. Decently holding her own opposite these acting legends, Cameron Diaz is featured as the love interest and female foil as she begins a relationship with Leo by attempting to pick his pocket. John C. Riley, Jim Broadbent, Brendan Gleeson, and Liam Neeson round out the hugely talented supporting cast, but none of them are featured or developed as much as I would have hoped. Expertly photographed, there's no denying the amazing aptitude at which 19th century New York is recreated. Every last element is surprisingly detailed and authentic. Attempting to balance plot threads involving class warfare struggles, the New York draft riots of 1863, a love story, a revenge plot, and Manhattan politics, Scorsese's ambition unfortunately gets the better of him, as even this picture's liberal 166-minute runtime isn't enough to make a compelling picture out of everything. Scored beautifully and somberly by Howard Shore, this R-rated film functions almost more effectively as an educational lesson on immigration relations during the Civil War than it does as a cohesive drama. The opening and closing battle sequences are, however, rather amazing. Thrilling, gritty, violent, emotional, and brilliantly shot. But the forgetful, confusing, and haphazard middle two hours represent nothing but wasted potential. image is the last, a shot of a grave overlooking Manhattan, as the scene slowly fades forward in time, ending with the Twin Towers proudly on display. When it works, the experience here is undeniably moving, engrossing, and exciting. But when it's surrounded by such a poorly paced and bloated plot, even the amazing acting, visuals, and direction get overlooked. Gangs of New York, forgettable story, arrestingly dramatic action. Now here's some of your reviews from the YouTube comments. Gangs of New York, an 8 and a 7. You applauded the film's visuals and acting, but didn't care for the lackluster story, rating the film a great. I scored the film one point lower, but I definitely agree with that assessment. It was just too bloated for its own good. Unfortunately, not one of Marty's better pictures. But definitely riveting at times, I thought it was cool. 